The uh, chair recognizes uh, Senator Sinema for your questions. Oh, thank you, um, Mr. Chair, and thank you to our witnesses for being here today. During last week's hearing, we heard about coordinated security planning efforts between law enforcement and federal partners for January 6th, including areas where planning could be improved. As part of this conversation, the committees heard about intelligence shared by the FBI field office in Norfolk, Virginia, on January 5th, warning of extremists preparing to travel for, quote, war. We also heard from the former chief of U.S. Capitol Police that he never saw this report and that on January 6th, he knew of no intelligence suggesting there would be a coordinated violent attack on the U.S. Capitol. The head of the FBI's Washington field office has previously said publicly that the Bureau did not have intelligence suggesting the rally would turn violent prior to the January 5th report. However, on January 8th, a podcast from the New York Times outlined activity across multiple social media platforms showing coordination between groups ahead of the January 6th attack. The podcast highlighted social media conversations about coordinating travel, bringing weapons, and using language like occupy the Capitol and the revolution will come to Washington. So my first question is for Ms. Sanborn. Was the FBI aware of these specific conversations on social media? To my knowledge, no ma'am, and I would just sort of articulate why that is. So under our authorities, because being mindful of the First Amendment and our dual-headed mission to uh, uphold the Constitution, we cannot collect First Amendment uh, protected activities without sort of the next step, which is the intent. And so we'd have to have an already predicated investigation that allowed us access to those comms and or a lead or a tip or a report from a community citizen or a fellow law enforcement partner for us to gather that information. So the FBI does not monitor publicly available social media conversations? Correct, ma'am. It's not within our authorities. So my next question is for Ms. Sanborn and then Ms. Laslova. Did the preparations for January 6th rally follow the typical process for sharing information among law enforcement entities when confronted by this type of an event with a high potential for violence? And were there additional processes implemented to consider that, as Senator Klobuchar pointed out, this was an event with Congress in session and the vice president and vice president-elect all gathered in one place? Yes, ma'am. So a couple of things we did different than normal operations is we sent out and made this a national priority for all of our 56 field offices to actively go out and ask sources, collect information on any threats that posed to the national capital region, not only for the six, but for the inauguration. That tasking is what led to the potential collection in the Norfolk field office. We also, a step we took that is different than our normal every course of day of business is both Washington field office and headquarters stood up command posts. So we activated our NC3, which is a multi-agency task force that was 24-7 inside the Hoover building, inside SIAC, and Washington Field mirrored that in their field office. And ma'am, um, oh. mm -hmm. yes, <laughs> yes, ma'am. And DHS also, INA had been on a heightened period of alert after, before the election and then after the election. We also participated in the command posts in um, the Washington uh, field, the Washington Fusion Center. In retrospect, we may uh, have uh, been better off if we had considered sending out some kind of a terrorism bulletin, but we did not do that before January 6th. Hmm. So, and this is a follow-up question for both of you. The FBI field offices did have intelligence outlining a threat to Congress. We know that conversations were happening on publicly available social media, and DHS was tracking the travel of some of these suspected radicals. So given all of these pieces, what, in your opinion, broke down, and what got in the way of law enforcement properly planning to meet these publicly articulated threats? I'll start. Uh, I think exactly the processes we had in place we followed, and I think that's the good news. I think, as you heard the director yesterday, and I would echo, anytime there's an attack, we in the FBI want to bat 1,000, and we want to not ever have this happen again. And so we're asking ourselves exactly the questions that you're asking. Is there a place that we could have collected more? Is there something that we could have done? And so that is exactly what we're looking back at. 
I think that the information we had, we worked quickly to try to get that out in reporting and share it in multiple ways, verbally, email, putting it in portals, et cetera. But 100%, you can rest assured, we're asking ourselves the same as we want to continue to improve and get better. And ma'am, we also at DHS are completely dissatisfied with uh, the result of our efforts leading up to January 6th. We are re-examining how we distribute our information, how we coordinate with our partners. We thought that it was sufficient, and clearly it was not. We are also working much more um, focused on uh, applying more resources to better understanding this particular threat. We also are looking at how we can better understand social media to get those tips and maybe get better insight into what this adversary is doing. This is a very difficult threat for us and the intelligence community to understand. It is, um, uh, it will require more partnerships with non-traditional partners and with our standard state and local partners. And you will see that we will reinforce our already good partnership with the FBI. We will do better. Oh, thank you. Following up on, on that last comment around local partnerships, um, I wanted to go back to Ms. Sanborn. On January 5th, the FBI did receive information that armed protests were being planned at Capitol buildings in all 50 state capitals. Could you just briefly, in the time we have left, share how that intel was acted upon and how it was shared across the country? Ma'am, I don't recall off the top of my head. I'd have to get back to you on the mechanism that we did to share that information. So, so with, based on that response, would it be fair to assume that it was not a, a particularly high priority um, that there were armed protests planned at all 50 state capitals across the country? No, it 100% was a high priority, and um, it definitely, for our mission and our focus, we were not on the 6th only focused on the national capital region. We were focused on the whole country, and so it 100% was a very important focus for us. I just can't remember the mechanism of the document or whether it was a email, whether it was a joint product, how we pass that information, but we were concerned with it, and I know we disseminated it in some form, and I owe you that. Thank you. So I'll just have my team follow up with you. Uh, Mr. Chair, I see that my time has expired. I yield back, and thank you. Thank you. I, 